Hey, what's up everyone? It's Pablo from DMAR Shoe Repair in Guelph, Canada. I am the owner and cobbler here, and welcome back to another video. Today, we have some Red Wings. This is the 9014 Beckman model in black Featherstone leather. The soles have been very, very worn on these. The midsoles are cracking. The leather is pretty dinged up. So we're gonna rip these babies apart. We're gonna show you what's inside of them. This is a Goodyear Welt construction, and we are going to rebuild them with new leather midsoles, new Vibram half soles, and new cat's paw heels. Let's get this project started. So let's get these on the shoe last and break them apart. Got some uh, rusty nails here. Obviously, this has been exposed to water and got some rust damage. So in this pair of boots, we are going to reuse the original welts because they are in great condition. So we got to pull the stitches out of the welts. And sometimes these come out in one pull and other times they come out one by one. So let's see what's going to happen here. Looks like we got to go one by one. Not very fun. Time consuming, but worth it as this is the proper way to do the job. Actually, I'm going to cut the threads in between the sole layers. Might make it a little bit easier to pluck this way. Okay, so something we want to note here is that midsole is actually cardboard, not leather. Got a plastic heel rand. And thank God we got a nice heavy duty steel shank wrapped in fabric for anti squeak purposes. And then we got a nice layer of cork here, which we are going to remove. Now, when some cobblers resole, they don't do all this work. Um, but to me, this is the proper way to do the job. 
And this fabric piece here that's glued to the leather footbed is called the Gemming, and it kind of keeps the shape of the shoe. And this shoe was very heavily worn. As you can see, the Gemming has come loose. So this was already loose before I removed the old sole. Um, so if I just resold on top of the materials, um, this would have gotten worse and worse and worse. So now I can reinforce this, put it right back where it was originally, and then you have the same, you know, narrow waist and shape that these boots are known for. So I'm going to remove the rest of the cork, secure the gemming if there's any more loose spots, and then we'll put a new fresh layer of cork in. Let that glue set up and cure, and then we'll stick that down and get our new cork in. Well, this is what it looks like after you take apart one Goodyear welted uh, boot. You get a bunch of leather and rubber and threads and cork, and oh, what do we have here? Looks like an RFID strip. I believe these are used for theft purposes. And it uh, looks like Red Wing uses them in their boots as well. All right, so we have our stitches removed on the welt. So when we restitch, we can try to hit all the original holes. We have our gemming reinforced and re-glued. We have our steel shank that is cleaned up. First coat of glue put on, ready to be stuck as well. And then we have our new cork filler. And I'm gonna cut this out of a nice cork sheet. One thing too, the original rand is made out of plastic, so we're going to replace that with leather. So a bit of an upgrade there as well. Um, the paper cardboard midsoles, those are out. That's being replaced with a nice leather midsole and then the plastic rand, nice leather rand. So a couple upgrades for these babies. So I'm going to trace the old rand onto here. Give myself a little bit of wiggle room. All right, so this part of the rand is gonna be glued so we can't see that natural color. So I'm gonna dye this black and then give this a nice sanding on a 45. So when it butts up with the welt joint there, we have a seamless seam and uh, not a big bulky join line. So let's get that prepped and going. This is a piece of natural crepe rubber. And as you can see, my sanding wheel got quite dirty when I was sanding that rubber half sole. So I use this to clean the belts.
And this is some good old Phoebe's leather dye in black. What I do is buff this while it's wet. And a little touch of shoe polish. And a buff again. All right, let's set our steel shank in. So Red Wing never skimps out with their steel shanks. They always put the three rib heavy duty shanks in their boots. And we have our cork filler. So we're gonna slop some glue, slop some glue and fill that cavity. Want to get this leather sole nice and pliable so it's not super stiff when the customer is wearing the boots um, especially right after he gets them and again we're gluing leather to leather two porous materials two coats of glue on each all right guys we got our glue set up we got our sole nice and pliable so let's install the leather midsole Right, on to the last for some hammering. All right, so we have our leather midsole installed. Our next step is to install our rubber half sole and stitch them up. In the meantime, while this cures a bit, I'm gonna just hit this with some leather conditioner. This is the oiled leather cream from Saphir in their gold metal line. It doesn't add a high shine. It uh, lets the leather dry matte just like this oil tan leather was designed. I wanna work that welt, bring that color back. And these rips here, once this is dry and buffed, I'm gonna put some contact cement and just glue them down. All right, let that dry up.
All right, so a lot of cobblers will go onto their sander and sand that splice line. Um, as you can tell, I use my knife and cut it by hand. That way you can see exactly how even and deep your splice is because you want it to be perfectly straight and perfectly flush with the rubber. So there's just a perfectly smooth transition. So I think by hand, obviously you're gonna get a more accurate line. And with this leather sole being porous, we're gonna give it two coats of glue as the first coat will absorb and not have much stick to it. And in the meantime, we will wash our Vibram half sole with some thinner. Get that all cleaned up and ready for glue. All right, so I think this glue is cured up and nice and tacky. So let's stick our Vibram half sole. So that was that splice line I was talking about. This is perfectly smooth transition. And let's put this on the uh, sole press. Make sure that everything's stuck nice together. And this is one of my favorite sounds in the shop. Let me know what you think about it. Looking good. So this baby has to cure up. The glue is still a little wet and tacky. So the last thing we want to do is put this onto our outsole stitcher and have glue transfer from the sole onto the needle and into the gears, into the machine. Could make a mess. On top of that, the stitches would probably skip. So it's about a 30 minute uh, curing time before we can hit the stitcher. While that glue dries, we'll just talk about what boots I'm wearing today. These are actually my favorite pair of boots, and I do own quite a few pairs. So I have on the Whites C355 Logger Boots in natural double shot leather. Um, what I like about these boots is the comfort, the arch support, and just the overall build. They took definitely a good 50 hours to break in, but once I got that arch broken in, um, they've just been so comfortable. I can wear them all day long. There's so much natural leather in these boots that when I get home, it's like all that moisture has been absorbed through the leather since it is an organic material. So I just love these white boots and I did opt to keep the kilties. I'm not necessarily a kilty guy but i do love how they look so shout out to whites definitely one of the best the whole pacific northwest there is quite a few remarkable boot makers i did recently get a pair of franks and they are outstanding as well but nothing feels like these whites very happy with them <laughs> so what i'm doing now is putting a groove into the leather and rubber sole so my stitch sinks into the sole and give some extra life to the threads. So I do a hand channel first and that kind of gives me a line to follow. Then I hop on my machine groover here and just cleans up that groove and makes it just a little bit deeper. is ready for stitching. Just want to give it a quick buff.
those are clinch nails. So as you can see, the stitching stops 270 degrees. So the back heel has to be secured. And we put these clinch nails, which clinch the footbed on the inside of the shoe. And what that does is prevent this rand and midsole from ever coming loose because when we take off our footwear, a lot of times we kick the back heel. So that's just uh, essentially extra securement so this will never come off. So what we have to do next is clean up the threads, install our heels, finish the edges, apply a little bit of stain, and then these babies are done. Okay, so we are done with this pair of Red Wing Beckmans. Customer wanted them pretty much to look the same as they did originally. Um, of course, we did a little bit of an upgrade with the leather heel rands and the leather midsole. And I kept the edging on the leather midsole natural and burnished because I wanted to just accentuate that this is a leather midsole now, not the fiberboard that was there originally. Other than that, we reused the original welt did a nice Vibram mini lug half sole, and then the beautiful cat's paw rubber heels. These boots were really, really beat up when they got here. Um, so we gave them a good wash before the video started and then did a couple coats of conditioner. Other than that, let me know your thoughts and thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you could hit the like and subscribe button and we have a lot of more projects coming up for you guys in the near future. Thanks so much.